This is a Hack the Hague podcast. On this episode, what it's like teaching cybersecurity. So, uh, my name is Daniel, and um, I teach uh, technical information security at the Hague University of Applied Science. Um, so, my interest in cybersecurity is twofold. Um, first, I notice that um, our world becomes more and more connected to the internet and I noticed that our lives became more and more connected to the internet and I find that fascinating. So it's just, it sparked an interest of mine. And I also noticed that in games, uh, like games where you pick a character to play to to um, to complete an adventure i always played the character that uh, was able to, to to take the back door into like uh, buildings or the, the the hacker type of character so i thought hey if i like to play this in games why don't i well uh, start making this my work in real life um can you also tell us something about uh, how you became a teacher in this area I always wanted to become a teacher in many things. So uh, probably the first thing I want to become a teacher in was uh, uh, physical education. Um, and then I wanted to become a teacher in uh, teaching music to people. Uh, I thought, hey, maybe I want to become a teacher in teaching math to people. Uh, and eventually I rolled into the field of cybersecurity. So I became a teacher in cybersecurity. Okay, <laughs> that's interesting. Can you tell us something about teaching this subject in school? Where did you start? Where are you now? I started working at the Hague University of Applied Science after having done my education in multiple universities in the Netherlands. I had the privilege of uh, following uh, courses from each uh, professor in the Netherlands on their uh, topic of expertise, which was really nice. And I wanted to share the insights I gained from them with, uh, yeah, basically the rest of the Netherlands. And uh, um, yeah, so it, it kind of rolled into it and yeah, fun. And the example that you gave about uh, the questions that you got from, uh, from parents, whether you were training criminals. Yeah, it's an interesting question uh, if, uh, for example, parents come to me and state, hey, aren't you training criminals? You teach students how to break into computers, how to hack communication channels. And so I also thought about this on uh, like high school, so uh, the school before we go to university. And uh, there were a bit of parent concerns, but you could also phrase this type of education as um, for example, instructions on uh, into sexuality or, for example, on how to use drugs. Uh, we have these interventions on schools on, hey, this is what you will see in the world. Know that it ex exists and uh, just be aware about it. And it's not that when we teach students in high school about drugs or uh, about having sex that we train criminals as well. That's a nice example. Uh, do you think a school has a role in preventing students to go to the criminal side of hacking? Um, I hope not. <laughs> you, you can't be uh, sure, of course. Um, but um, school is, of course, a amplifier for students' skill and abilities. Uh, students come to our school and then we help them reaching their uh, a potential that they could have. Um, but at school, we try to focus on the uh, autonomous student. Hey, a student is a person on its own. It makes its own choices. But we want to inform the students on, hey, this is how the world looks like. And if you behave in a certain way, this could be the consequences. Hey, we have a set of rules that states on the Internet, this is allowed and this isn't allowed. And it's your choice on what you do with this rule and uh, what you do with the digital world we have around us. So yes, of course, we suggest students uh, have we like you not ending up in jail. Uh, so these are a bit of the guidelines how you don't end up in jail. But I'm, I'm not a, a police officer that state to the students, you are not allowed to. We, we have other people in the Netherlands for that. 
Uh, how do you um, make students enthusiastic for the subject of cybersecurity? Is there anything specific that you offer them, that you teach them? Um, I like to take students on an adventure. I like to uh, present students with a, for example, a maze or a riddle or a environment where they have to uh, uh, go look around corners and see what they discover. And during this, this adventure, this discovery, they will figure out new things. So I don't like to provide them with written tests. Okay, this is the theory and now you have to be able to recall the theory. No, I like to provide them with a puzzle. And if they understand the theory well enough, they can solve my puzzle. Students like that because it's interactive and they, they are we try to create the incentive that they go explore the theory and the knowledge and skills online because everything is online. I, I don't have to record lectures because there are way better lectures online. It, for me, it's to show the students this is where you can go to get the information that can take you further. Okay, that's clear. Um, is there anything, uh, if people think that cybersecurity is not interesting enough or not really worth looking at, can you give them an example that makes them think about cybersecurity and how important it is? It's interesting that um, if we look at where companies focus at, for example, it's uh, a lot of companies focus uh, on gain well obtaining gaining money making money and security is a investment and for a lot of people this investment the return of this investment hey you have to pay money to make yourself secure um people don't feel the risk people don't feel the danger so they are not willing to invest and uh, also for example not only money or time and effort uh, people want usability on the internet they want to have fast access to the information and it's a it's a hassle to always have to fill in your password that's annoying yes security can be annoying but it's there for your protection so we try to focus on usable security like computer systems networks and settings that help you but also um aid you in being online more more secure and what's your biggest eye opener for yourself in cyber security what really shocked you or surprised yeah. you made you laugh so so the biggest eye opener for me was when Facebook openly stated to everyone in the world, hey, you are using your platform, but we own your data on this platform. Everything you give to us, we can do with it whatever we want. And the interesting thing about that is they were completely open with it. And well, the majority of people still stayed with companies like Facebook or Google or another company that has the business model of selling your data um, uh, because they are so big and so involved in people's lives that you can't just back away from them. It's very difficult uh, to, for example, lose contact with family and friends because I had a fear of missing out of this, this new item that's only available on Facebook and you just don't hear of it. Um, yeah, I, I found that very frightening that this involvement creates an opportunity for large companies or, for example, governments to to basically take control of our digital lives in that sense. So that was my biggest eye opener. Say that there is uh, potential students listening to your podcast. What would you tell them to kind of like show them the really interesting sides of cybersecurity and, of course, your... Uh, your classes. Yeah, so the most interesting side of security for me is teaching students how to break things, how to show that the things that we rely on, the things that we trust, are may not be that trustworthy. That may we may be naive of thinking, oh, everything will be okay. Um, every computer system can be hacked, and it's for us to state, hey, do I trust computers enough to uh, give this personal information of mine, this this uh, this intrinsic value of our lives to this computer, uh, which can be hacked by default, and uh, and showing students sometimes how easy it is uh, to get into a system, and showing students that they can do it. Um, 
basically let them see, oh, if I can do it, then other people can do it as well and perhaps more easy than I can. But if we know where those entrants into our system are, these back doors, for example, of how to break things, how things can break, we know a bit better on how to fix it and how to protect ourselves because we have figured out, ooh, this is where it can go wrong. Now I know where to focus my attention on. What would you say to someone who is considering to joining your classes? Would you tell them to, to come? And if yes, why? Yeah, why would I invite people to my classes? Uh, I, I, I don't... Uh, I don't necessarily want people to invite to my classes. So uh, education for me is important because it provides you with an opportunity to figure out what you would like. So uh, if students don't like my classes, um, I'm not angry at them. And it's, it's just they figured out that what we do is not their thing. It's more important that you find what you like, where you want to spend the majority of your hours during your day at. And if that's something that we have in common, for example, security, then please, please join our class because I want to help you further. I want to reach that potential that you can be a, a something that can help, for example, the Netherlands in making our country more secure.